In this session, we shall look at the policy framework for disaster management with the perspective of Eastern Africa. In the first part, we shall look at the frameworks for disaster risk reduction. Risk reduction emphasizes management of disaster risk. It is the systematic development and application of policies, strategies and practices to minimize vulnerabilities and disaster risks throughout a society and to avoid, prevent or to limit, mitigate and prepare for adverse impacts of disasters within the broad context of sustainable development. Risk reduction is a mechanism to reduce vulnerability. It is a multi-sectoral and inter-institutional process. It requires synergies between sustainable development and risk reduction. Examples include vulnerability and risk assessment, institutional capacities and operational abilities, assessment of differential vulnerability for critical facilities, infrastructure, use of effective early warning systems, and the application of many different types of scientific, technical, and other skilled abilities. In many countries, disaster risk reduction has not been prioritized in disaster management. But there is a current shift in paradigm. Key instruments for disaster risk reduction include the National Development Policy, the Poverty Reduction Strategy Papers, Programs for Implementation of Millennium Development Goals, and in-country instruments including country cooperation frameworks and United Nations Development Assistance Frameworks. Disaster risk reduction is an all-encompassing entity that involves all sectors at national level. National plans should therefore be driving the driving force of disaster risk reduction. They provide an overall development framework for implementing a national vision. They identify national development concerns and they should define the development goals and opportunities and bring together all sectoral plans under a single framework for disaster risk reduction. Poverty reduction strategies are essential in disaster risk reduction and they should be articulated in a number of documents in countries. They include national development policy plans. In some countries there are annual economic and social plans. The national budget is also important. Public sector investment programs and poverty reduction strategy papers. There are also re regional frameworks for disaster risk reduction, including the African Union Framework for Disaster Response, the Intergovernmental Agency for Development Early Warning Framework, IGAD, the East African Community Early Warning Mechanism, the Great Lakes Framework for Disaster Response, and the Regional Disaster Management Center of Excellence. These are frameworks that you should learn and try to find out the key provisions in these frameworks. There are also international frameworks for disaster risk reduction, the key being the Hyogo Framework for Action, which aims to build resilience of communities and nations to disasters. The SPHERE standards are instruments for ensuring quality of response. The International Strategy for Disaster Reduction and the UN under the UNDP has a number of instruments that provide for disaster risk reduction. Strategic goals of the Hyogo framework include effective integration of disaster risk reduction into national policies, plans, and programming at all levels, 
strengthening institutions and capabilities at all levels, and systematic incorporation of risk reduction into the design and implementation of emergency response and recovery plans. In the second part of this presentation, we shall look at the framework for disaster response and coordination. Most countries in the Eastern Africa region have national policies or mechanisms for disaster management. How is the coordination of disasters implemented in your country and in your district in particular? Elements of the post-disaster phase include response, that is decisions and actions taken during and after the disaster, and they include immediate relief, rehabilitation, and reconstruction. The framework should contain objectives and goals of the response, framework for coordination, logistics and supplies management, communication and information management, survival response mechanisms, security and human rights, emphasis on the most vulnerable populations, emergency operations management, and then rehabilitation and reconstruction. Institutional frameworks for disaster response should exist at the national level, regional and provincial level, districts, and sub-district levels. At the national level, all countries have a central coordinating office. Some key sector ministries have a coordinating structure for disaster management, in line with their sectoral mandate. Usually the coordinating body is an interministerial committee or task force for disasters that cut across sectors. The national level, the usual structure is the office of the prime minister or sector ministries or office of the president and line ministries. At the districts, there is usually a district disaster management committee. At sub-district level, there are sub-district disaster management committees, although these have not yet been set up in many countries. Ministries and sectors in the response. Sectoral policies on disaster response may be sourced from health ministry, agriculture and animal sector ministries, education, roads, water, housing, home and internal affairs, and the defense ministries. There may be subnational bylaws in relation to decentralization and the management of disasters in districts. Responsibilities. At the national level, the structure should be responsible for overall policy form formulation and national guidance, planning, coordination, resource mobilization, technical support, hazards mapping, reporting, and research. <coughs> In regions, zones, and provinces and districts, disaster management committees are necessary. There could be regional and provincial level structures. The informal sector may also be involved as well as the public sector. And these may have specific teams. The roles of the districts include assessment, planning, implementation, resource mobilization and information gathering. Roles of sub-district levels include the need for availability of village and community structures. These are the usual first responders and they take charge of the local response. They should be in charge of creating local awareness and community surveillance. Other actors include UN agencies, international agencies and NGOs, 
faith-based organization, community-based organizations, and the civil society. Coordination is an important cross-cutting element of disaster management. These need to create a central source of guidance, a unit of command, establish clear leadership and create coordinating bodies that are related to the command structure. Why coordinate? Avoid duplication, avoiding wastage of resources. The rationale is that there are many actors involved in service provision during emergencies and there is a potential for confusion, competition and duplication. The goal is to achieve the greatest impact through management and integration of activities and ensure that priorities are shared and to rationalize services by establishing common standards among all actors and to ensure communication occurs amongst stakeholders. All actors should work in harmony with the established policy framework. Disasters are political. Policy emphasizes the role of government, the role of the executive, and the, law, the role of local agencies. Challenges. Do you know any challenges likely to affect coordination of disaster management, especially at the district level? Challenges of coordination include multiplicity of actors, divergent views and policies, divergent interests, linkages and resources.